if I go to the grocery grocery store here, I, I don't get recognized too much. Maybe a season ticket holder or something is um, like know your face a little bit. <laughs> My first year was, I think it was like 10,000 in the stands, and uh, right now we're sold out. And it's getting bigger and bigger, the hockey here, so um, we, we all play and are excited to, to play right now. Hopefully we can keep going here and be ready for the playoff, because that's, that's the main goal. Obviously we want to reach the um, Stanley Cup final. Yeah, I remember when I got here, I was um, me, Ovi, Salmon, and, and Green, I think. It was great. We had some, some great memories back then. Hello, Cavs fans. I'm sitting here <laughs> with, <the laughs> with number 19, Nicholas Backstrom from Gavle, Sweden. How are you, Nicholas? I'm pretty good. He's a good-looking young Swedish dude. He's got lots of charm. He's a heck of a hockey player. He's a fun guy to be around. We grew up together. I mean, a lot of us came in as just kids. Then we started to win and made hockey really cool in D.C. Nicholas looks the best when he slicks the hair right back. Ovi, I don't think, has ever combed his hair. Salmon has been referenced to, like, Bon Jovi. What kind of look are you going for here? Uh, maybe a mix between both. <laughs> <laughs> It was so much fun out there, you know, spend time with the fans and do crazy things. We were on sort of the cusp of breaking through and we were doing all these unique sort of videos and I think we were doing a lot of promotional stuff in the city and charity work. We were building something there, not only on the ice, but off the ice. It doesn't matter uh, what's the score, we know like we can win the game. Score! Nicholas Backstrom on the putback. Nicky had no fear, and if we got behind, those guys turned it up a notch. The Capitals erase a 4 0 deficit, and they pulled off a miracle on 34th Street. It was the most fun time to watch hockey. When they scored, it was like they won the Stanley Cup on every goal. You just couldn't believe how excited these guys were to score every night. They had a charismatic star in Alex Ovechkin. They were just a fun, happy-go-lucky group. They were a winning team. They were playing a fun-to-watch style of play. It became the, the place to be and the team to talk about. Yeah, we scored a lot of goals. People were just loving it, and we were loving it. It was just incredible to see how everything changed when they well, we made the playoffs and they made that this slogan rock the red. Rock the red! The whole city just switched around and, and became hockey fans. I mean everyone had the red jersey and it was number eight on the back or number 19 on the back. Let's do this! As good a playoff atmosphere as you will find. The sellout crowd is on its feet. I still get goosebumps when I'm thinking about how much fun it is to, to play in front of our home fans because the atmosphere is great. Back from drops it, Semin fired, SCORE! The fans are going for surf! This place is jamming and rocking. The Capitals winning their first playoff series since 1998. Hockey became the sport in D.C and the, it coincided with the Rock the Red, and that was with the arrival of Ovechkin and Backstrom. You've got these generational talents, these guys who look like they might be Hall of Famers someday. This is amazing. <laughs> Becky! <laughs> <laughs> who do you like to hang out with? Uh, one guy, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, he's blonde, he had blonde long hair. Uh, do you know what country he's from? Uh, his country, probably Jamaica, Jamaica, Nicholas Backstrom. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I think we have a uh, chemistry right away. Me and him are growing up together, and uh, we both Europeans, I think we have the same uh, kind of school of hockey. And most important thing, like, 
we understand each other on the ice and off the ice as well. Yeah, tell them about last time, last two meetings in PS3. Oh yeah? We can go play against right now, and I beat you. He took great care of me when I, when I got here, picked me up before the games, so just really trying to connect off the ice. It's very rare you get two guys basically coming up at the same time and are going to be uh, superstars for their whole career. Potentially two Hall of Famers side by side. And Ekstrom brings it in. Ovechkin well, scores! I'm always trying to set, set him up and uh, he's a great player, probably the best player in the world. Everything meshed so well on the ice for those two. Backstrom and Ovechkin work together like hand in glove. Nick is just the quietest superstar maybe the league has seen. And maybe it's because he plays next to maybe the loudest superstar that the league has ever seen in Ovi. The contrast is beautiful. Ovechkin, out there, imposes his will. Loud, you can't miss him. Backstrom, subtle play after subtle play. That's blocked away, outlet pass, dribbles to Ovechkin. He's got a breakaway, here he comes, Alex Ovechkin scores! And when I see Ovechkin and I see Backstrom, I see two people who care a ton about the Capitals, who want to win, but they accept each other, they understand each other, and they find a way to do it together their own ways. Back from the near side, Ovechkin scores! Back from Pizzo, Ovechkin, and the Capitals will play for the lead. The 2010 team had so much offensive pop. The muscle behind all that offense were two different 100-point guys. Nicholas Backstrom and Alex Ovechkin, they took the league by storm. Schultz got some help this time and a three on two for the Capitals. It's the big guns, led by seven. He'll hand to Ovechkin, Brisker scores! And the big 5-0 for Alex the Great. It was kind of a funny moment actually. He scored his 50 and, and I had my 100 points, so that's uh, kind of fun actually. Every time Backstrom has been close to a milestone, Ovi's been close to a milestone too. And sometimes Nick gets his milestone on Ovi's milestone. <laughs> you know who doesn't care? He doesn't care. They dominated that season. Everything was just sort of building to this, this crescendo. They are rocking the red here in Washington, D.C., getting ready for the Eastern Conference quarterfinals. The 2010 playoffs come around, and round one is against Montreal. In game two, Nick picked up the puck with about a minute to go. Nicholas Backstrom has brought the Capitals all the way back. He doesn't shoot often, but I mean, he shot the puck, went in to tie it up, and in overtime, he grabbed the puck again and went right down and scored. Nicholas Backstrom in overtime! The hats rain down! Nicholas Backstrom is the Mad Hatter! I remember that series. I mean, we were up 3-1 in the series. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun right up until it ended in, in the first round of, of the playoffs. It's over! Montreal wins! Oh, my. The Montreal Canadiens stun the Washington Capitals. Yeah, it was... It was it was actually a tough, tough loss, and, and, and we were all kind of shocked. They knew that was their year. It was the feeling of a missed opportunity. It's hard to talk to the guys after we lose a series. I remember looking over at Nick and he was crying. That showed me so much how much he cared, even at an early age. And I think the Capitals, as an organization, are going to realize that they were built for the regular season and not built enough for the postseason. You learn from it, then you move on. And uh, uh, unfortunately for us, it took, it took a little longer to understand what it takes. Without Nick not winning a Stanley Cup. Backstrom just holding. That moment I probably will never forget. Ovechkin scores! It's one of the great memories I will ever have. The face off the cap of the 47 years that I was around professional hockey players. Yeah,